does not produce life. Uh -huh. Meaning there is nothing you can reap from the flesh that is positive, that can add on your spiritual life. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus goes on to say, the words I speak to you, yeah. they are spirit. Now we learned today. The Lord is spirit. No, not the Lord is the spirit. The, the spirit, spirit is, is the Lord. Yeah. The spirit is God. So Jesus is saying, the words I am speaking, they are God. Amen. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are alive. Now, I need you to understand what the Lord Jesus is saying. John 6, 63. Now, if Jesus is saying that the words I speak to you, they are God. Okay. Past, present, and future does not exist for spiritual words yeah. because the spirit is God. Mm -hmm. If you look, the Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And it means that every opportunity you get to hear words of the Spirit, you are hearing God the same way, the same time Moses did. Oh, no, you said that again. You, you did? <laughs> no, I, I feel like you missed it. God is the same uh -huh. yesterday, today, and forever. Uh -huh. God is not in time. Yeah. Jesus is saying the words I speak to you, they are. Spirit. Meaning that... They have an existence beyond what you're seeing. Yeah. They are spirit, meaning they are God. Mm -hmm. And they are life, meaning they are the breath that you see in Genesis chapter 1, everything being created from. Yeah. So, if I hear or I read Moses having an encounter with the burning bush, and if I, it's not present, okay. uh, listen to me little sister, okay. it is okay. not present. Okay. You're missing it. Okay. If I read Moses mm -hmm. having an encounter with God on Mount Sinai and I truly hear him by the Spirit, then I am having the same experience with Moses. Okay. Okay. Not I am getting Moses' experience. No. I am there with Moses. There with Moses. Because what Moses heard and what I am hearing, it, it is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Meaning Moses is hearing it and I am hearing it. Let me prove it to you much further. Wow. The Lord Jesus is speaking to his disciples and, and, and many other people. Mm -hmm. They say, well, this woman whose husband is she, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, blah. If, she, if, they, if this one dies, that one dies, then in heaven, whose wife will she be? Mm -hmm. Jesus said, yeah. you error. Because you do not know the scriptures, know the power of God. Meaning you don't know God and his ability. To think about you have no capacity to reason or to comprehend this. Mm -hmm. you, you do not know the scriptures, know the power of God. Meaning you have limited God because you think it is about what God said. Yet God is not in the past. That's so you cannot say God said. God does not live in the past. So okay. Nor is he in the future. Okay. God is not in time. Mm -hmm. So what God says is real relevant in all timelines and it is alive in every timeline. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. So listen to what he says. Have you forgotten... What God said to you when he spoke to Moses. Can you go to the scripture? I want people to know what I'm telling you is in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My daughter, Professor Sham, said, ah, this is scary good. Okay, listen to this. Uh -huh.
Okay, please, 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 please. I want you to go to where he says, don't you remember what God to said to you when he spoke to Moses? I want you to go right there. Uh -huh. Ah, Benz, I thought your Bible encyclopedia. Oh, no, what happened? For the context. Uh, I, uh, but I still it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got it. Read it. Matthew 22. Mm -hmm. This is verse 31. Mm -hmm. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, mm -hmm. have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, Have you forgotten what was spoken to you by, by God? So, as far as God is concerned, he had the conversation with these people when he spoke to Moses. Yeah. Yeah, oh. he already spoke to them too. Yeah. Ah, I feel like I want to run somewhere. No, no, no. Yeah. Ah, knowing the things of the Spirit. Amen. So, yeah. Jesus is looking at them and saying, have you forgotten what God said to you when he spoke to Moses? He did not say, have you not read? What Moses, yeah, 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 yeah. He did not say, have you not read what the Bible says or how God answered Moses? He's saying, no, have you forgotten what God said to you when he spoke to, when he spoke to Moses? Wait, God wasn't speaking through Moses. God was speaking to them with Moses. I, I need you. Thank you. Open your ears. Open your ears. Open your ears by the spirit of the living God. Open your ears by the spirit of the living God. This is why in, in Luke chapter 4, Jesus looks at the people and he tells them, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he hath anointed me to bind the broken hearted. He says all these things. And then he looked at them and shut the Bible and said, these words have been fulfilled in your ears. He didn't say in your ear hearing. Mm -hmm. He says in your ears. Yes. Meaning this thing you already heard it. But the miracle is in your ears because you have failed for it to go into your heart. Because this was said to them by Isaiah. God said this to Isaiah. It's not a new thing. I don't know if you're understanding. Yes. There's nothing new under the sun. Amen. This is why when people, people tell you a new anointing, there is no such thing. There are diverse manifestations of God, but new is relative. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. So if you are a follower of Revelation Church, if you're part of Revelation Nation, and I have an encounter with God, yeah, it's actually your encounter. You are there with me. I receive. Hallelujah. That is how it works. Thank you, Lord. That is why the Bible says that when Abraham gave his seed, Isaac also gave. But Isaac wasn't even born. Yeah. How did Isaac give yet he wasn't alive? He wasn't even born. When his but when his father gave, Isaac was also there giving. Yeah. Amen. That is why Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. No, Paul, you are not there with Jesus. You are not even one of his disciples. You are not even connected with him. You hated him. You didn't even believe in him. You thought he was false. You wanted to kill everyone connected to him. But all of a sudden he's saying, I am crucified with Christ. But I thought Christ was crucified yesterday. I thought Christ was crucified a year ago. I thought Christ was crucified a few months ago. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Notice, when you get saved, you have gone back to Calvary. Same day, same time. With every other spirit that was present. That is why the Bible says when Jesus looked, he saw his offspring. He saw his harvest. You are there at the cross. You just don't know that you are there. You just don't know that you are there. Amen. This is why you struggle with faith. Because you are thinking it is yes, something you accumulate. Yeah, yeah. It has to know. Yeah. It is built upon. That's so good. This is why it is very dangerous to be with people who have no encounters. Mm -hmm. To be with people who have no... They don't, they don't uh, uh, possess the spirit of revelation. It's crazy to me. Yeah. You'll be wasting your time. Yeah. I don't go to church for the pastor to read back the Bible to me that I have at home. Come on. <laughs> Why go to church 
And I can open John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And your pastor tells you the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And say, okay, let's pray. Just remember, run away from sin, this, this. Mm. My guy, those are written. I can read that at home. I can get that by myself at home. Yeah. But listen to what Jesus said, our Lord. Our Lord Jesus said this. He gave gifts to men, apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors, for the perfection, for the perfecting of the church. So when you go to church, your pastor should perfect you. But he's not perfecting you by telling you to do what you already can do by yourself. He's perfecting you by giving you grace. Like Paul said, you are, ye are partakers of my grace. Your pastor, your evangelist, your prophet, your must be able to impart his grace on you. What is the grace? What is his encounter with God? Yes, Lord. Have what is the encounter with God? Good. Not everyone is going to see Jesus appear to them. No. But what did the Lord Jesus do in their life that changed their life? And can they communicate that to your spirit for your life to change? Yeah. If they don't have that, you're wasting your time and you're in the wrong church. Just because they're preaching the word doesn't mean it's the right church. Yeah. That is also a, a misunderstanding that many have. Oh, you know, our church, they, the pastor really preaches the word. Yeah, he reads exactly from scripture. No, you can do that at home. If you want to just have your, the Bible read back to you, don't come to my church. Come on. That's real. Don't come to my church. You can do that at home. That's why those pastors have nothing to preach. They just tell you, find God for yourself. Then what is your purpose? You are supposed to bring me to a new height in understanding God, in seeing God. Yeah. But if you're telling me to go find God for myself and the Bible says grow in grace, I am supposed to get more grace because of who I am with. Yeah. Yeah. That is how you accumulate grace, yeah. who you honor, who you serve, who you're connected to. Lot was a benefactor of Abraham's grace, not because he worked, because he was connected. So if your pastor, if your pastor just is reading back and say, you know, you got to stick to the word. Yes, we are sticking to the word, but revelation is also the word. The Bible says, rightly dividing the word of truth. Why do I need to divide what is already a fact? Come on, come on. It means it is beyond what is written. In every verse you read, there are seven layers of revelation. Children of God, desire the greatest height. Amen. Desire the greatest depth. Desire the greatest manifestation of God. You have been so spooked and so lied to that you are even afraid to see the power of God. Come on. Wow. You have been so spooked that you can't even believe God shows visions. Oh. You have been so spooked that you can't even believe deliverance is real. Now you're believing contrary to scripture that people can say in the name of Jesus, yet they are using demons. You have been so deceived to think that you can use witchcraft in the name of Jesus. How is that even possible? Those two things don't even go together. If you ever find a real demon, demons don't confess Jesus. They don't even want to say that name. So how can they operate with the name of Jesus? Even the Lord Jesus said that's impossible. But today you've been so spooked to even believe that that is possible. Mm -hmm. You have been... ...so spooked to think if I don't pray, demons will choke me at night. Yet the Bible says that God gives sleep to his beloved. You have no trust for God. You trust that if you pray, then you make God do something as if God is a genie. Yet God is your father. Wow. Why is the church so fearful of deception? 
The Bible says, if it were possible, even the elect will be deceived. It says, if it were possible, meaning it is impossible. But everyone online, these foolish people, they tell you, yeah, 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 they are twisting scriptures. I used to be deceived. Then you're not an elect. Yeah. Question your salvation. Yeah. A believer can be lied to, but to be deceived, deception is for the destruction of your soul. Yeah. And I taught this, didn't I? There's a reason bef between a lie, a lie and deception. Deception is to change your idiosyncratic view of God. You look at God and you seem like a bad person. You see God like an atheist would see God. That is deception. Yeah, the, a lie, a trick and deception. I think I made a, a message on this. People can watch it on, on my YouTube. If you have the spirit of God in you, the Bible says that the spirit of God will lead you in all truth. If you're going on YouTube to find who is a true prophet and who is a fake prophet based on videos, you don't have the Holy Spirit. Oh, I'm going to say that again. If you need BBC News to know if somebody is fake, if you need to go online to see clips of people cut for you to know if somebody is fake, you don't have the Holy Spirit. If you need to hear somebody expose somebody for you to believe they are fake, you don't have the Holy Spirit. If you just feel, oh, something didn't sit right in me, I feel like they are fake. Those are your emotions. It has nothing to do with truth. Facts don't have feelings and they don't care about your feelings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know where we got this soft version of Christianity. It's because we have denied the power of God. We have been called to a standard of power. For the kingdom of God is not in words, but in the demonstration of the spirit and of what? Power. That your faith should not be on the wisdom of men. You people have built faith based on what pastor so and so said. Yet the Bible is saying your faith should be on the power of God. Then the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what is the word of God? Power. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The word of God is powerful. Yes, sir. The word of God is quick. Yes, the word of God is alive. Yes, the word of God has the ability to discern the hearts of men, the thoughts of men. Amen. The word of God is power stop falling for these preachers that they just shout about they just make noise they just make a lot of noise they just make a lot of noise avoid them run away from them yeah. the kingdom of god is not in words we need results we need to see the jesus that is alive we need to see the jesus that has resurrected we need to see the resurrection power of god not just talk 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 if your power is limited only to deliverance even the even the youngest christian can cast out demons Hallelujah. where is the rest is that all jesus did we are not saying don't preach but show us the power of god that you're preaching Amen. not just talking that is why we have so many people that are just reactionists. They just take, they are trending. Right now, many of them have cut videos of Prophet T.B. Joshua. Now all of a sudden, is this is false. That is false. When the man was saving souls, thousands and millions of people going to Nigeria, where were you? Show us the testimonies of people. This man had thousands and hundreds of thousands of people healed delivered changed yeah. resurrected i know people that were healed from the man's ministry yet i never met him myself i never met him personally no. we know authentic testimonies mm -mm. we are not saying the man may have had mistakes mm -mm. but the evidence of god was a hundred percent there yes, Lord. everyone has mistakes i'm sure the mistake they pointed out is not even true and a lot of things have already started coming out. And some of them, the one lady, and this breaks my heart, one of them lost, I think, a child or something. These are sad things. Why are we, why are we touching God? The man is already dead. But foolish people who didn't even know who this man is, now all of a sudden, they are making reaction videos. All of us. It was a trend to say Prophet Love is a wizard. Yes, Where are they? 
It was a trend, right? Witchcraft in the church, sorcery in the church, false prophets in the church. They realized it didn't work. More people are coming. They stopped because it cost them. Stop following trends. Start following the Holy Spirit. Start looking, stop looking at what is online. Start looking at the Spirit of God so that you know what to do online. One soul lost, too many. That mama that has lost a child, I wish I knew her. If I knew her, I'd probably help her with the funeral and everything. It's heartbreaking. Why would we celebrate something bad happening to her? That's not Jesus. But when this man's thing came, all the men of God, they were celebrating. Yay, talking a lot. Oh, look at how he's been exposed. Yet the man is dead. <laughs> how does that profit you? We don't celebrate the downfall of others. It is evil. It is wicked. It is diabolical. It is actually evidence that the devil is inside of you. Because it is only the devil that is looking for who he's going to die with. The devil is seeking to inflict pain on people to see people suffering the same way that he will suffer. If you're going to church to find a perfect man of God, you're wasting your time. There is no perfect man of God. If you're going to church to find the perfect preacher, the perfect teacher, Pukwazana uh, on the on the stove. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. In the bowl, right there. My spirit actually caught caught it. I saw it with the, my spiritual eyes. Do you see? Move the pots. Move the pots. You see? You see it? I just leave him. See, when I'm talking about God, how sharp I am. You didn't even see that, huh? I heard I didn't hear it. I saw it. Mm. It's okay. So understand that by the Spirit of God. Understand that by the Spirit of God. We need to change our ways. We need to do better. You guys don't understand if the prophetic dies, which will never happen. If they kill a prophet, another one will rise up. If the prophetic dies, the church is gone. I love you all with the love of the Lord Jesus. I'm sorry. I just said. Uh, hallelujah. Our God is so good. Our prophet Ilya, God bless you. God bless you, man of God. Our Lord Jesus is so wonderful and so beautiful. I love you all with the love of God. And uh, uh, sometimes it, it, it just, I'm so moved by God. And uh, yeah, it, it is uh, supernatural to see God move. May the Lord give us grace. Let us walk in love, genuine love. A love that prays for others. A love that does not celebrate when others are in pain, a love that does not glory in people's weaknesses, a love that does not um, enjoy people's pain, a love that understands the pain of one is the pain of all, the suffering of one is the suffering of all. That is the kind of love the Lord wants us to have. Um, may the Lord Jesus give you grace. May the Lord Jesus give you peace. 
and may you know his amazing love. I love you all. Remove limits from God. Remember, the Spirit is God. If you don't understand that, go watch today's message. You will change your life. Ah, the prophetic today. <laughs> hey, our God is good. Our God is good. Ah, our God is good. May the Lord give you peace as you rest tonight. And those who are beginning the day, may the Lord give you strength. And may the Lord give you mastery of your, over your life. And may you see the goodness of God consistently. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Blessings to you all.